Today on Tiny Voices, I make perfectly valid excuses for why I and other Let's Players are terrible at playing and talking. That's today on Episode 5 of Tiny Voices. So this topic came about because of a conversation that I've been following about how people get frustrated watching YouTubers do so poorly at games. The obvious reason is because it's a presentation, the player isn't just playing the game for an audience, he's also commentating over it. It's hard to both play and talk at the same time. Much harder than you might think. Human beings are terrible at multitasking. Even though most of us greatly overestimate how good we actually are at it, performing multiple tasks consecutively is actually not something that the human brain is built for. Research has proven time and time again that we are absolutely dreadful at multitasking. There's strong scientific consensus backing that up. For example, the University of Utah actually found that generally speaking, the better you think you are at multitasking, the worse you actually are at it. In a driving experiment they conducted, 70% of participants thought they were above average multitaskers. Only 2% of participants actually were. This same study found that practice does not make perfect either. It's not a matter of training or experience, we just have a limited ability to focus. So how bad are we at multitasking? Well, research conducted by Stryer et al. found that driving while using a phone, for instance, is as bad as driving drunk. When talking about commentating over games, I thought that example was actually pretty apt. At first, talking on a phone while driving and playing games while commentating might sound like a totally off-base comparison, but here's the thing. Most people think that the reason you shouldn't be on a phone while driving is because of peripheral distractions, like you have to take your eyes off the road to text or because you have to hold the phone and it leaves you with only one free hand. Those peripheral distractions might contribute to accidents caused by being on the phone while driving, but the big one is actually word generation. We have limited resources for attention and word generation uses up those finite resources. You see, again, you can really only do one thing at a time. If you're talking, you're functionally blind while your brain diverts resources to processing your speech. That's not an exaggeration either. It's called inattentional blindness. Of course, your vision doesn't just go black. You don't just black out. It's not actual blindness, but you fail to really encode and process visual stimuli properly. And I recognize that's a pretty hefty claim to make. For that, we'll go back to the research by Stryer et al. In this study, two experiments were performed. In experiment one of the study, they contrasted the effects of handheld and hands-free cell phone conversations via a pursuit tracking test. A control group was included in which participants were told to listen to the radio and do the pursuit tracking test. The pursuit tracking task involved the occasional flashing red and green lights on a computer display. If a green light flashed, participants were instructed to continue. If a red light flashed, they were instructed to break. The red light green light manipulation was used to measure the probability of failing to detect traffic signals and the reaction time to traffic signals. A higher rate of missing traffic signals and a slower reaction time was associated with increased risk in using a cell phone. So the results of experiment one showed that there were equivalent deficits in performance between handheld and hands-free cell phones, which indicates that the interference was not due to peripheral factors such as having to hold the phone. Experiment 2 of the study attempted to more specifically localize the source of cell phone interference on driving. Participants performed the same pursuit tracking task, but this time they performed both an easy dual task and a difficult dual task. The easier dual task was a shadowing task, in which a participant performed the pursuit tracking test while they repeated words that an experimenter read to them over a handheld phone. The harder dual task condition was a word generation task in which participants performed the pursuit tracking task while generating a new word that began with the last letter of the word read by the experimenter. Results of experiment two indicated that the word generation task produced significantly more tracking error than the shadowing task because the word generation task was more attention demanding. In other words, to sum that all up, Word generation, which is the act of thinking of new and novel things to say and not simply repeating a phrase, causes inattentional blindness. And that's why it's much harder to play a game while commentating than it is to play it in silence. Before I wrap episode 5 up, 
I've included a multitasking test from the psychology department at Newcastle in the description. Let me know how you did on it in the comments below. By the time you're hearing this, I will be off enjoying PAX Prime in Seattle, so if this episode is a bit shorter than the others, it's because I had to make sure that this was written, recorded, edited, encoded, and uploaded by last Wednesday. So I had a bit less time for a lengthier episode. No problem, next week will be the season finale and we'll get deep into fighting games. Thanks for watching everyone, take it easy, have a good one.